the project files for this particular movie serve as a basis for all of the movies within this particular course. There are three main files that we'll use. The first is d3.min.js, which is the D3 library downloaded from d3js.org. The .min signifies that we're using the minified version of the library. Since we're not editing the library, we want to use the smallest, most compact version of it, and that's the minified version. We'll be editing mostly the index.html file and the main.css file, and I have those open in my text editor in the background. The two files are open, and I can see the tabs at the top. In your text editor, they might be at the left or the right. The index.html file is a basic HTML5 web page. At line 6, I've linked up the main.css file by using the link element and setting the href attribute. The main.css file resides within the same folder as the index.html file. If you want to put yours in a subfolder, know that you'll have to change the value for the href attribute. I've imported the D3 library in the next line with the script tag, and I've set the source attribute, that's how you pronounce this particular attribute, to d3.min.js. And just like if you wanted to put the CSS file in a subfolder, if you wanted to put the library in a subfolder, you'd need to change the value for this attribute. At line 9, we see the body tag, and this is where all of our HTML will appear. If you write any HTML by hand, you'd put it just under the comment place all DOM elements here. Let's go ahead and write one. We'll create a paragraph tag, and we'll write a simple hello. I'll save it, and then when I go to the browser, I've already got it loaded in my browser. Refresh, and you can see hello is centered on the page. Now you might be asking, why is it centered? Let's go back to the code and take a look at the main.css file. Here, I've set some basic styling. For the body and the HTML elements, I've set margin and padding at zero, so it's flush to the edges of my browser window. I've set some font settings at lines four and five, but most importantly, I've set the text alignment for the HTML page to center. And this is really done for aesthetic purposes for this particular course. You can change this as you wish. Just take note of the changes that you make because as you head through the course, there will be small changes that accumulate and you'll want to know when they're your changes versus my changes. Also in this file, you see at line eight, an ID has been set with a background color and a border. This particular ID chart, and you know it's an ID because it has the hashtag, is going to be used for the SVG element, and it provides the SVG element a creamish color background just so that we can set it apart from the background of the HTML page. You don't need to use background color with SVG, but here again, it's for aesthetic purposes. We'll head back to index.html, and at line 12, we see a script tag that goes to line 15. We'll write all of our code within the HTML file at lines 12 through 15. Ahead of time, I have a function call to console.log, so that way you can see console messages in your browser window. If I head to my browser window and refresh, I already have the console open at the bottom of the screen. You can open yours if you're using Chrome by going to View, Developer, and Developer Tools. And again, I'll refer to this really as the Developer Console. And that actually hides it in this case. Option Command I will open it again. And the Console tab here will display any messages, so hello. The Elements tab also is helpful. We'll use that a lot. That displays the current HTML that's rendered to the screen. Let's click the console again and head back to the code and get rid of this tag that we just created. And there you have it, a basic template to get started with D3.